Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com titled Case Studies, Impulse and Force in the Topic of Momentum and Collisions. So just a brief review here. I'll link the momentum uh, concept builder video here. Um, but quickly, uh, momentum is how hard an object is bring to a stop. Um, so things that are moving fast and are massive, uh, have a big momentum, the equation is P equals MV. Okay, you can see the units here. There's a lot more in the video on momentum. Then impulse, I'll link a, the video on impulse, um, but really quickly, uh, impulse causes a change in momentum. Impulse is a force acting for amount of time. How hard are you pushing and how long are you pushing an object? And that causes its momentum to change, the change in velocity times the mass. All right. So today we're going to be looking at actually this uh, this idea here that the impulse causes a change in momentum, and we'll see how different forces affect are affected by different masses and how different times affect different velocities, etc. As we go through here, although we'll be mostly focusing on is the force getting bigger or smaller in a given collision. Okay, collisions, by the way, are uh, the place where the uh, concept of impulse causing a change in momentum is most helpful in understanding what's going on. All right, so in this, there there are only two levels, master and wizard, and they uh, are similar. And so I'm just going to talk about the different types of problems, not which level they come in. So the first two types of problems are where either the mass is different or the change in velocity is different. So we're going to go over some problems like that, one problem like that here. Okay, actually, before we do that, if, uh, if we have a bigger change in velocity for a given object, it would have had to take a bigger force to cause that. In this particular concept builder, we either have delta T changing, M changing, or delta V changing. Okay, so when we see delta V changing, that means it must have taken a bigger force to make that happen. That means uh, that force and change in velocity are directly proportional. I'll link a video here on direct proportionality. Similarly, if the mass is bigger in one of the scenarios, that means a bigger change in momentum, which means we needed a bigger force force and mass are directly proportional. So that means if either of these is getting bigger, then the force will be bigger. All right, let's now do the sample problem. Compare these two collisions between bumper cars. We'll pretend they're the same mass for the bumper cars. I couldn't find two videos that use the same uh, animation. So here we have ones bouncing back and here we have ones that kind of hit and stick together. So two bumper cars are moving at 11 or at 18 meters per second. They collide with each other and bounce backward with a speed of 6 meters per second. Here they are bouncing backwards. Now the same two bumper cars, once again, use your imagination. These are the same two bumper cars. Much cuter, by the way. Um, bumper cars moving at 18 meters per second. They collide with each other and come to an immediate stop. Okay. So uh, first of all, you'll notice they're the same bumper cars. Uh, oh, let me explain what I'm talking about in case you haven't looked yet at the um, concept builder. So uh, for this one, you will have a choice every time of delta V, M, or time. So mass, change in velocity, or time. Um, you can see that the mass is going to be the same because they're the same two bumper cars. And actually, there's always a statement that I forgot to write in this one that says the time of impact is the same. Okay. And so look for statements like that. Other statements you'll see are the mass is the same, or in this case, it's the same object. You'll see a velocity changing from zero to a particular amount or from a particular amount to zero. And so you know the change in velocity is the same. Find the one that it doesn't say this is the same, and that's the one that's different. In this case, we can clearly see we're going from 18 in one direction to six in another direction versus 18 in one direction to stop. Okay, so in this case, delta V is different between the two cases. So when you find that either delta V or M is different, uh, 
then to find the greatest momentum change, you just need to figure out which one has the bigger delta V or the bigger mass. In this case, it's delta V. So over here, we'll look at this car. Um, it starts with 18 going this way, and it ends with 6 going the opposite direction. Over here, we start with 18, and it ends up stopped. Okay, so this will be a change of 18. This is a change of 24, because it went from 18 one way to 6 the other way. It had to stop, and then it kept changing direction to go 6 back the way it came. Okay, so in this case, case A, case A is kind of hidden there, but there you can see the end of it. So in this case, case A is bigger because the change in velocity was bigger. Okay, case uh, which case involves the greatest impulse? Well, we know that impulse J equals the change in momentum. It's causing it. It's not that they're the same thing, but the values will be equal. So if the change in momentum is bigger for A, it must have had a bigger impulse. Okay, which case involves the greatest force? Well, if J is bigger and we know T has been the same, then the reason J is bigger is because F is bigger. Or you could go back to the fact that we wrote in a slide or two ago that uh, the force is directly proportional to the change in velocity. Okay, remember you only see proportionalities when everything else else is held constant, which you do here. So since A had the bigger force or a bigger impulse, then A must have also had the bigger force. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if time is held constant. Okay, so if time, or if time is different, the other ones were holding time constant. So if time is held constant, we have two situations that could arise. The time uh, could be different because it's smaller. And notice that the force times the time has to equal the same change in momentum because those are constant. So these are the same. And so if we have a small time, then we must have a big force in order to get the same answer as a small force and a big time. In other words, something like 6 times 1 can be the same as 1 times 6, right? If one is getting smaller, the other has to be getting bigger in order for them to equal the same change in velocity. Since when one gets bigger, the other gets smaller, that tells us that there is an inverse relationship between time and force. The longer a collision lasts, the less force is necessary to make the change in velocity. Okay, One of the most famous examples of this, if you're ever in a water balloon toss, when you try and catch a water balloon, you move your hands back with it. That means you're holding on to it for a longer time that means there's less force on the balloon and it doesn't pop and your team wins, yay! Or every coach in almost every sport says, follow through with that kick, follow through with that swing. Why? Because they want to have a, oh, that's actually different. <laughs> Let me just explain that really quick. So if you have a certain amount of force on it and you put a lot of time into that, you follow through, you stay in contact with the ball for a long time, that's gonna cause a bigger change in momentum. Okay, so that's what's going on there. But in this case, uh, if we want something to break, like we're uh, cutting uh, wood with an axe, well, we want a very small time of impact, so the force of impact is big and the object breaks. Okay, well, we went on a tangent there, but I think it was interesting. I love this topic. Anyways, um, let's go on to our sample problem. Okay, so in this case, you can see my son jumping on the ground here. Here he's landing on tile, and here he's landing on carpet. So compare the collision between the landing, between landing on two different types of floor. Case A, a boy lands on tile and is brought to a stop. The tile floors are rather rigid and retract downwards very little as the boy lands. A boy lands on carpet. This is case B. Lands on carpet and is brought to a stop. Carpet floors retract downwards 1.5 centimeters. This is fairly thick carpet as the boy lands. Okay, so what's going to happen? Well, the boy is going to come to a stop very quickly on this because there's no give. It just hits, bam. Whereas in case B, there's the as he kind of falls into the carpet. He begins slowing down the moment he hits the top of the carpet 
and he slows down the entire time he, that he's compressing the carpet. Okay, so this will be a small time of impact, small t, okay, and this one will be a large, at least relatively to the other one, a large time of impact. Okay, so which variable is changing? Time. Just to point it out, we see um, the boy, I probably should have written something like the boy was traveling uh, five meters per second when he hits the tile and is brought to a stop. A boy is traveling at five meters per second. So we can see the change in velocity is the same, but they both come to a stop. And um, and it's the same boy. I should have written the same boy lands on carpet. Boy, I was not perfect in writing this, but you get the idea here. So it's the same boy landing. And so the mass and the change in velocity are the same. Um, so time is the thing that's changing. So which involves the greatest change in momentum? Well, M was the same and delta V were the same. So that means the change in momentum had to be identical. So these are both <laughs> this is not going to fit well. Both the same, okay? And this one's also both the same. Because remember, the impulse is causing the uh, change. Impulse, that's impulse, is causing the change in momentum. Okay. All right, so which case involves the greatest force? Well, if delta P is the same for both of them, and one of them has a small time, that means it must have a big force. Okay, so in this case, case A, where he hits the tile, has a small time of impact. He hits and stops almost immediately. Um, that's gonna have a bigger force, which most of you know, if you fall from a big height on tile versus falling from that same height on carpet, the tile one will make your feet hurt more. Why? Because there was more force. Keep in mind, we can also just remember that force is inversely proportional to time. Since time got bigger uh, over here, then the force got smaller. Over here, time got smaller, so the force got bigger. So that is why A is correct. All right, those are the, really the two types of problems. Either the velocity, change in velocity or mass are changing. It's like the first one I showed you. Or the time is changing. Uh, the time of impact is changing. And that you'll see. Uh, it is like these ones. Enjoy puzzling out the concept builder. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about impulse and momentum, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. And we'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.